Hey, good morning, FCF. We're on day two of our journey looking at Old Testament women of faith. Not old women, but Old Testament women, <laughs> women of faith. <laughs> uh, not that there's bad, anything bad about being an old woman. I mean, it just shows that you are very fortunate that you've lived that long. But uh, we're going to look at, at a character that to me is a very sad character, and her name is Hagar. Uh, she's a part of the, the Abraham journey. You know, God calls Abraham when he's 75 years old to leave Ur of the Chaldees. God's going to do something new. He's going to call this man to trust in himself, and then he's going to continue to reveal himself to the man, and from this man will come ultimately the nation of Israel. God will continue to reveal himself to Israel, give them uh, his word to put into print and pass it on to us and so forth. So it all starts with, with Abraham, but uh, when you come to Genesis 16, God had promised Abraham in Genesis 12 that if he would trust him, he would make of Abraham a great nation. His descendants would be like the sand of the sea and so forth, and great nations would come from Abraham, and, and Abraham would be blessed, and Abraham would be a blessing to the whole earth. But when you come to Genesis 16, it's 10 years into this journey that Abraham, with his wife Sar Sarai, her, her name has not been changed to Sarah yet, they've been following God, but she's barren. She can't have any children. And so how are you going to give me descendants like the sand of the sea if Sarah and I can't even conceive of one child. Now, here's the key. Abraham at this point is 86 years old. He was 75 when the journey started. He's 86 now. It's 10 years later, or almost 11 years later. And Sarah is kind of giving up. She's saying, look, uh, maybe we can have children through my handmaid. She had an Egyptian handmaid. Abraham was pretty wealthy. He had a lot of livestock. He had a lot of servants in his, in his household, or we could call them employees today. And so Hagar was Sarah's personal attendant, would probably be the best way to describe it today. So she says to Abraham, uh, go ahead, take Hagar as your wife and, and have, uh, you know, we'll, we'll produce seed through her. She was starting to doubt God's promise to Abraham. It was 10 years in, nothing, no ch children were being produced. So Abraham goes along with it. Sure enough, Hagar, uh, conceives now the story gets kind of dark and I don't I want to read a lot of it but when when she knows that she's pregnant when Hagar this Egyptian attendant handmaid for uh, Sarai she's she starts to get kind of uppity and she starts to to look down a bit on her mistress because her mistress could not have children and she could so Sarah starts really treating her terrible. Uh, you can read all this in Genesis 16, starts giving her you know, a really, really bad time. Such a bad time that Hagar just, just wanders off. So here she is. She's this pregnant lady wandering off in the wilderness, no way to take care of herself. But God comes and finds her. And, and I'll read you just a little bit of this. This is in Genesis 16, verse 9. Uh, actually, let me start with verse 8. So the angel of the Lord, in verse 7, finds Hagar wandering around in the wilderness, and he says, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? She says, I'm running away from my mistress Sarai, she answered. The angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also told her, and said, You are now with child, and you will have a son. You will name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. This is such an important thing. You know, she might have felt lost and forgotten and used and abused, and, and a lot of that was true, but, but the Lord was, was watching her and was well aware of her misery. So that's phase one. Now the storyline picks up later, and so it's now, um, you, you know, years later, and in Genesis 21, Ishmael has been born. It's about 14 years later. Ishmael is probably about 14 years old. But now God has kept his promise to Sarah, Sarai. She gets her name changed to Sarah. A heck of a lot easier to pronounce. And, uh, and she's having a child, Isaac. Now, now, the wild thing about Sarah, Sarah's 99 years old and Abraham is 100. And they have this miracle child. So, when the child is being weaned, okay, so I don't know what age that, that is, you know, anywhere from you know, birth to two, I, I'm not sure. Um, Ishmael is kind of mocking 
the celebration over the child being weaned. And Sarah sees this and she's angry and she tells Abraham, she insists that Ishmael, who is Abraham's son, and Hagar, poor Hagar once again, that they be cast out. And, and it is just a tragic set of scriptures. Um, let me read you in Genesis 21, verse 14. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders. Picture this. This woman's got water on her shoulders. And then he sent her off with the boy, Ishmael, who's about 14. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. So what happens is, is they run out of water and Hagar is just, just shattered. She tells her son, Ishmael, go try to shade yourself under a bush. And they're just waiting to die. They're, they're going to die of dehydration. She knows it. And that's when the story gets really interesting. Um, verse 17 of Genesis 21, God heard the boy crying. Man, I could, I could just preach on from there. I, I, I could do so much with that text. Maybe someday I will. Anyway, God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Don't be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went, she filled the skin with water, and gave the boy a drink. God was, verse 20, God was with the boy as he grew up. And I'll, and I'll just stop there. So here we have poor Hagar, who um, is somebody that to me is, is one of these hard, uh, hard end stories in life, that, that nothing really worked well for her. She was just kind of a piece of furniture that was used and abused and pushed around, but, but God was always with her. And God was with this boy that seemed to be just a castaway who, who was crying, waiting to die. God saw the tears. And so I think that Hagar's story tells us a lot, that the people that seem to be forgotten, inconsequential, used and abused, um, they're not inconsequential to God. He sees them. He sees their tears. And, and often He is with them in ways that do not appear obvious to others or even to themselves. God was with Hagar before she knew that, that he was watching, that he was with her. That well of water was there <clears throat> before God opened her eyes. God was already preparing this. God was going to be with Ishmael before Ishmael ever had any notion of it. Ishmael was preparing to die. So I hope that we can walk away from this story of Hagar feeling like that, that this, this was a, a wonderful woman in her own way who was thrown into chaotic circumstances, made the best of it, did have a real trust in God, as did Ishmael, which may shock some of you. I have every reason to believe that we'll see both Hagar and Ishmael in the kingdom of God forever and ever. Hope this gives you something to think about. <laughs>